Is Ark Survival Ascended dying? Only released in October of 2023, the player base has plummeted in recent months, and to say that the community is growing restless would be an understatement. A couple of months back, I did a video titled The Problems with Ark Survival Ascended, which seemed to spark much debate amongst the community about the direction that ASA needs to go from here. Considering that video was made a couple of months back now, I was kind of hoping that a lot of my points would have been addressed by now, but sadly, that is not the case. As I sit down to write this video in late February of 2024, the art community is at its lowest point in history. The center, which was meant to release this upcoming week, has just been indefinitely delayed, and many players have given up on ASA already, either quitting the franchise to play other games, or returning back to Ark Survival Evolved, which right now is sadly a overall much better experience. So is Ark Survival Ascended actually fixable? Can a once great franchise dig itself out of its self-imposed grave and return once more to the heights of one of the finest survival games out there? I do think it's certainly possible, but things need to change quickly. And over the course of this video, I'm gonna go through how I think that Wildcard and Snail Games can fix Ark Survival Ascended. So let's start by going over where we are today. The main problem at this point with fixing Ark Survival Ascended is that it's past the point of being a quick fix. The game has been now out for four months and the reality is that not a lot has changed. This has meant that some of the goodwill that people will give a recently launched game is quite simply gone. People are no longer willing to put up with the same game breaking bugs, many of those that were present in a game released almost a decade ago by the way, and optimization updates have been thin and far between, meaning that you still need a high end PC to play the game on any decent settings. Servers also still run like absolute trash, which is something that has become increasingly obvious as official transfers open recently. All of these reasons have been factors in the plummeting player base, with Arc Survival Evolved often rocking double the number of online players in the Steam charts. And is anyone really surprised about this? Some of these players will have already purchased Ascended, only to get bored of playing just the island, a map that they've already likely played countless times on Evolved. Some most likely abandoned or refunded the game shortly after release, unable to play it smoothly at all due to the game's ridiculous minimum specifications. And seriously, if there is a worse optimized game out there, please inform me. But the worrying reality for Studio Wildcard and Snail Games is this. There is not enough reason for existing ARC players who perhaps have not purchased Ascended yet to move over. Yes, the hardcore ARC audience may have already lapped it up within the first week, leading to Snail Games boasting about sales during that period of time. But interestingly, not a word has been said about sales since. Any player who decided not to buy it in October upon release is probably feeling pretty great about their decision right now. Unless they enjoyed playing official servers, there is nothing to look at enviously and really feel that they are missing out on. While I do completely understand that for console players, the ability to finally play with mods is a huge deal and cross-platform is obviously a neat addition, I don't believe these make up for the many issues that the game has on all platforms. Yet, despite all the various issues of Ascended, whether that is the performance, consistent crashing, or just simply a lack of content, I actually don't believe that that is solely what has sent community morale to an all-time low. I think the main reason that people are so overwhelmingly frustrated with Wildcard is the lack of communication. Communication when you release a game in the state that Ascended launched in is just so, so important. And yes, I know that Wildcard probably never wanted to release Ark Survival Ascended in its current state. I know that financially Snail Games probably tied them to that deal and thus having to release ASA in the unfinished, unpolished and quite frankly, mess of a state that it did release in in October. Yet, how many times have Wildcard missed ETA after ETA and it does reach a point where it's just not amusing anymore. Let's not forget that Wildcard originally set themselves the deadline of August to release Ascended two months before the actual release date, and on top of that, they also promised they were going to launch with triple the content the game actually launched with. When Survival Ascended was first announced in April of last year, we were told that it would launch in August with The Island, Scorched, and Survival of the Fittest. By the end of quarter one this year, we would have every map up to Genesis Part 1 fully remastered and in the game. Genesis 2 would then drop in quarter two, and that would be every story map done, remastered, and in the game with the modern maps to be drip fed to us over the course of 2024. To put this into perspective, Ark is about to release its first DLC, Scorched Earth, at the start of the second quarter of this year, and who even knows at this stage whether that will drop on time. The communication from the minute that Survival Ascended was announced has been nothing short of shocking. Even when they did row back on these promises in July of last year, they still claimed that SE would release in December, an aberration in quarter one of 2024. What's more, to put this into perspective a little bit better, we will now not get a single map in quarter one this year, with the recent delay of the center. 
Also, a quick mention to Survival of the Fittest, which has to be the biggest waste of developer time that I've seen in the game. For some reason, Wildcard seemed to think that SOTF would be huge this time, and it was worth investing the time into porting over. During the Extra Life event, Jeremy Stieglitz said live on air that he thought Survival of the Fittest was going to be huge this time. I have absolutely no idea where he got that idea from. It's the same half-baked game that was released previously and died within a month. This time around, it appeared to die within a couple of weeks, and good luck getting a game of Survival of the Fittest now, even if you do enjoy it, as the servers are an absolute graveyard. We mentioned the centre earlier, and it's probably about time that we mention that promise also. Seemingly reading the room a little as the new year started, Wildcard came out with an announcement, which entailed that the centre, originally intended to be launched after Scorch, sometime in quarter two of next year, will be brought forward and now released in February of 2024. This was a promising sign. Seemingly Wildcard had read the room and figured out that we were a little bit starved of content, so we're doing their utmost to provide us with some more content. This weekend, we heard that this was no longer happening. The question is, why on earth did they leave it so late to communicate this to us? Wildcard would have likely known for weeks that the centre wasn't going to make the date, yet left it to the weekend before everyone was expecting a release to tell us that it would be delayed, not just delayed, but delayed indefinitely. Another thing just adding to this communication issue is how arguably the most important piece of news didn't even make the crunch. Via the Ark Survival Ascended official Discord, Dolly did confirm that the centre would now be coming after Scorched Earth, with no ETA actually being given. The thing with this also is that Wildcard have just completely shot themselves in the foot. They brought forward an ETA, raising expectations, only to miss it by a complete mile, judging from Dolly's message in the Discord, and further dampening morale amongst the community, something that was incredibly obvious as all creators, even those who are normally amongst the most positive in the community, were incredibly disappointed. Speaking selfishly as a creator for just a moment here, I cannot stress to you guys how difficult planning content around this game is at times. No ETAs are ever met, but of course you still do have to prepare for them anyway, just in case that you are caught out that one time that they actually managed to hit a deadline. I recently accepted a position into Monarchy, which is a creator server with a group of extremely talented and hardworking individuals. For those unaware, we were planning to launch our new season of Monarchy upon the release of Center, and even as a new joiner, I could see the tireless work that was being put in by certain individuals to have everything ready for the new season, which of course was going to drop with the Center. Watching the current downfall of Ark and its franchise is just so incredibly tough, worsened by the fact that you feel just so much of it has been self-inflicted. So, where do we go from here? I think to say that there is a lot riding on Scorched Earth in April would be an understatement. I'd almost go as far as saying that the future of the game may be decided there and then. It is imperative that Wildcard not only meet their deadline of 1st of April, but also deliver a much better experience than the island on day one. These things will begin what we can hope is the gradual regain of trust between developer and community, which quite frankly is just non-existent right now. Another thing that I need to think very carefully about is the implementation of the incoming microtransactions. Given the current state of the game, the fact that Scorched Earth is set to release alongside Ark's first introduction to microtransactions just adds extra pressure to the dev team. We are yet to see how the Frontier Adventure Pack will play out, as little key information such as price and how it will work is known yet, but its mere existence has people watching on from afar. During an interview with Industry Biz in 2019, co-founder of ARK, Jesse Rapsack, boasted about how pleased he was that they had been able to keep ARK microtransaction free up until this stage. To be fair, in the same interview, he does also acknowledge how they were doing this, which was via releasing a premium expansion pack every year. Of course, by this, he is referring to the likes of Aberration, Extinction, and the Genesis expansion, all which helped to pay for the continued running costs of ARK Survival Evolved. The irony in all of this, of course, is that I think that ARK players would have happily had various skins in ARK Survival Evolved. However, Wildcard wanted to implement this, whether it was character skins, dino costumes, weapon skins, the possibilities were truly endless, and people honestly wouldn't have minded optional payments, and I think it would have brought in a decent amount of revenue for them. However, to suddenly release them in a brand new game that is already being lauded as a cash grab just seems like a crazy decision. It remains to be seen how much of the pay to win impacts the Frontier pack actually has, but if the latest crunch is anything to go by, promising an exclusive dino that can bring dead tames back to life, it could be quite sizable. 
With the microtransactions now though, it is all just speculation. And it's hard to speculate about the impact of something when we don't know the most important details on this one. One thing that I do passionately believe in is this. Porting over all the old existing arc maps from Survival Evolved will not save Survival Ascended. These are the same experiences that people have already had, just with enhanced visuals. The island in itself is a fine map, with plenty to do on it, especially for new players, but existing arc players are now absolutely sick to death of it. Survival Ascended needs brand new content that has not been played before, Sure, over time that will come in the form of mob maps with some talented modders on the scene, but I don't understand why Wildcard are spending all their time porting over existing maps when people are dying for fresh arc experiences and adventures. Now, this isn't me saying that I don't want any ASE content ported over. I think remastering some of those maps with the love, care and attention they deserve is a fantastic idea. The likes of Aberration, Fjordor and Ragnarok, which are all fan favourite maps, would be amazing to bring back in Unreal Engine 5 and allow us to appreciate them once more. Nostalgia is everywhere these days, it's in games, in films, and it's a powerful weapon if used correctly, but there is limited to no nostalgia with ASA if we just follow the exact same path as the previous game. To change path and prioritise new content would be a major shift, I realise that, especially given they had sold Ark Survival Ascended under the premise that all maps would be ported over. Yet, if Ark Survival Ascended is to truly flourish, become the bigger brother of Survival Evolved, and make the most of the new Unreal Engine 5, it needs to be brave and make new exciting experiences, not remakes of map that were built on a now out of date engine. And if they do insist on sticking with the same roadmap that they have, they're going to have to do a lot more than they did with just the island. Based on what they have said on Scorched Earth so far, it seems they are moving in the right direction with this, with talks of new caves and other additions to what is by far Survival Evolve's smallest DLC. Of course, this all just adds up to the idea that there is so much pressure on Scorched. I'm excited to see what they do offer up with this map, and as you'd hope with the extra time that is being given to it, they are going to deliver a polished experience, with a map that has been revamped completely from the ground up, that almost feels like a fresh experience. I think whatever happens with the delays and setbacks though, we are in need of a new roadmap, which will be about the fourth time ASA has had to publish one. In Snail's financial reports, they have claimed that there are brand new paid DLCs coming to ASA this summer, but at this point, no one really knows what to believe. On the latest roadmap, we saw there was something in November 2024 noted down as an Ark Survival Ascended surprise. Forgive us for being slightly sceptical about what that surprise could be, with a strong chance that Wildcard themselves aren't actually sure what it's going to be themselves. Of course, there is something else that is still stated to release around November this year, which of course brings me on to our last chapter, the Ark 2 problem. So this brings me on to my very last point, which I feel we need to discuss. Do we need Ark 2? In the build-up to the release of ASA, I think a lot of people would have said no. Little we had really heard about Ark 2 up until this point sounded like much to be excited about. The new Souls-like combat system that was being touted about was being met with a mixed reception to say the least. In terms of what has actually happened to Ark 2 though, that could be a completely different video. It is slightly confusing for me to read that Wildcard seemingly have no experience with Unreal Engine 5, when you would assume that they have been using it for the last couple of years to make Arc 2. Let's not forget that Arc 2 was meant to be launching in 2022, then 2023, and of course now finally Q4 of this year. In the community crunch announcing the launch of Survival Ascended, they claim that we want to provide you with an evergreen classic arc experience, one that could continue to grow over time on a cleaned up code base, making use of the technological advancements, not only in the industry, but also in what we are working on with Arc 2. The words certainly sound like a company that should have some experience with the engine. I'd like to reiterate that I am not a game developer, and if anyone has an experience with Unreal Engine 5 who might be able to shed some light on this in the comments, please do go ahead and do so. With Wildcard seemingly hard at work on ASA, the development of Arc 2 is a bit of a mystery. Could it be being outsourced? Was the original concept canned? And what effect does the current accusations against Vin Diesel have on the game's future? With the slow release of maps and content for ASA, it is possibly because the team has been completely split in half, with half of the team remaining to create more content for ASA, and half moving over to Arc 2. Either way, the simple question is whether the Arc Survival franchise now needs Arc 2, whether that is running alongside a fully optimised and released Ascended, or being the mainline game to take the franchise forward. And honestly, barring a complete change of course on Wildcard with ASA, I believe that we do. 
I believe the unsatisfactory launch of ASA has been enough to put some people off the game for good and may never return to it. From the moment that ASA was announced, people were skeptical of the nature of the game. And while I do applaud Wildcard's honesty when they admitted in the announcement of the game that the funds generated from ASA would be used to fund Dark 2, this has only further added fuel to the fire, with ASA looking more and more like a cash grab every single week. I don't think people are prepared to wait until 2025 to play some of their favourite maps again when they can quite simply play them right now on ASE. A more polished and better optimised experience at that. According to Snell Games, we are still on course for the launch of Arc 2 in the last quarter of this year, but honestly, it's hard to see that happening. Perhaps if the game is being outsourced with Wildcard operating on more of a consultancy basis, it could be possible. But despite all their flaws, I would still want Wildcard involved with the production of the game. Once upon a time, there was so much passion in there for their game and their idea. I just hope that if we do get Arc 2, enough of that passion remains to make an unforgettable gaming experience, as quite frankly, Survival Ascended so far has been unforgettable for all the wrong reasons. So to conclude, if you made it this far, I can only assume one thing. Like myself, you deeply care about Arc as a franchise, and the state that we find Arc Survival Ascended in is a deeply oppressing one. I am desperate for this game not to go down as a lazy abandoned cash grab, just designed to fill Snail Games' pockets up until the launch of Arc 2. If we do ever get Arc 2, of course. When Ascended was first announced, I passionately defended it to my community, stating that it could be a fantastic idea if executed properly. The reality is that up until this point, we have all been sold a lie. Can Arc Survival Ascended recover from here? Yes. Will it be easy? No. The first thing that the studio must do is restore trust within the community. For this to happen, communication has to improve, and setting widely unrealistic deadlines has got to end. There can be no more getting to within one week of release date, with the community panicking over whether stuff will be delayed or not. Surely it's time to start teasing screenshots of Scorched Earth, or even the other maps in Unreal Engine 5, and build up a bit of a good feeling about what the future of the game might look like. It is going to be a gradual process to rebuild ASA, and at this stage I think there is little margin for error on this one. It's important that Snail Games grasp the fact that Ark has one of the most loyal fan bases out there, but they should never ever take that for granted, as even Ark players can turn and move on, which should hopefully become clear to them in recent months. It's also important that Snail are under no illusions that they can simply leave Ascended to rot, completely turning their attention to Ark 2. People will not forget that. Upon the release of a hopefully much revamped and improved Scorched Earth, it's important that Wildcard try and turn a page on the last four months. The 1st of April 2024 is a very important day for Ark, and it's not far away. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I just wanted to thank my Patreons for the consistent support. If you do want to have early access to videos and access to my special sub servers for ASE, ASA and Palworld, World, why not check out in the link in the description below. I'll see you guys very very soon for another video. Bye bye for now.